Good morning. Um, because I am currently writing this article on the Sanum Adorasu, uh, I thought it would be important to sort of go through a small and short uh, polytheistic rite. Um, this one's actually based off uh, a very simple uh, rite to be conducted before a lorarium, and it's from uh, Nova Roma. Um, I've seen this uh, made in a few other ways uh, for other rites, so I'm going to use it um, for our own. Uh, I'm going to walk through what is to be said um, and all the various different things. Uh, I'll also include some things that I personally follow, um, but I'll add those in in specific places or paragraphs. Anyway, just so that we can get accustomed to using the Adoratio, and so others can understand what it is, um, that's why I've decided to use this video. Um, I have with me here a bowl of water, uh, because this rite, uh, and most other pagan rites, begin with, actually all pagan rites, at least Roman ones, begin with uh, washing your hands. and it, There's a specific prayer that most people use, some people might create their own, but I'm going to use this one because uh, it's what I've been taught uh, from others. Um, and you just have to wash your hands and recite this prayer. Um, because my altar is actually to my left and uh, sort of far away, and you won't be able to see me touch the altar, uh, there are going to be parts in the in the right when I'm supposed to touch um, the altar. So instead, I have my coffee cup here, and you're probably going to hear that noise when I say "touch the prayer" or "touch the altar." And so that's what I'll do instead. This is just for education; it's not an actual right. Uh, anyway. So you begin by washing your hands. Heiac aqua a corpore impuritatis, modo simile plumbo mutando ad orum eluit. Purge mentum, purge carnum, purge animum, ita est. May this water cast out the impurities from my body, as from lead to gold. May it purify my mind, may it purify my body, May it purify my heart. It is so. And then that's the end of the ovulation uh, prayer. And now begins the lorarium rite. And this can be done essentially every day. It's pretty simple. Salve lars familiaris. Salve te di penatas. Salve gen patris familia. Sadue Vesta Mater. And then the English translation. Be well, family Lars. Be well, D. Penatus. Be well, house of the Pater Familias, or the father of the family. Be well, Mother Vesta. And at this point, you can exchange Pater Familias or Patris Familias uh, with. Uh, Matris familias or mater familias. Uh, it's ex it's interchangeable because uh, pater familias means father of the family. But if you don't have a father of the family, or if you prefer your mother of the family, or if your mother of the family is much stronger than uh, your father in your family, <laughs> uh, then you can also change this out for mater familias. Um, and actually, uh, for education purposes, I guess I'll add that one in too. Salute gen matris familias. Be well, mother of the family. Or house of the mother of the family. Um, and if you're a Sanum citizen, you may also want to include um, salue sogmo or salue um, etato. Um, or salute patris, I think. I'm not quite certain about what it would be. 
Um, but you can also include any sort of uh, dedication to the state of Samus uh, in the same way. And it literally just means, if you say Sadoe Sorgmo, it just means be well Sorgmo, or be well state, be well motherland, or if you're using Padria. Um, and then after this, um, you're going to, after finishing all the Adoraceae and all of the uh, be well wishes. Um, you can touch the altar and recite Ita Est, or It is So, or May It Be. Um, and then at this, at this point, you can really include whatever sort of prayer you want. In fact, I'm going to include one that I always do. Uh, I'm going to find it right now. Um, but uh, you, many people decide to include uh, the first Orphic hymn to the Muses, uh, which really addresses all the major gods, except it's an extremely long list. Uh, so I tend to just focus on um, my uh, patroness, or my matron, uh, which is Athena. Um, so let me find that now. And um, let's see. Um, at this point, you can also include a more intense adoratio while you're praying, um, and you can even rotate your body. And when I say rotate your body, um, or turn your body back and forth, I mean really, you're really moving back and forth in a sort of general offering manner. Um, and when you rotate your body, when you do that, you're really just going this way. Uh, the philosophical or reason for doing this is that uh, is that you turn your body towards the rising sun. And since the rising sun for me is that way, I would turn this way, stop, and I might do another adoratio before I turn all the way back around again. Anyway, so I'm ready to do the uh, Orphic Hymn to Athena. And I can only begot a noble race of Jove, blessed and fierce, whose joys and gives to rove, a warlike Paulus, whose illustrious kind, ineffable, ineffable we find, magnanimous and famed, the rocky height, and groves and shady mountains they delight, and arms rejoicing with furies dire and wild, the souls of mortals dost inspire, gymnastic virgin of terrific mind, dire gorgon's bane, unmarried blessed kind. Mother of arts, imperious, understood, rage to the wicked, wisdom to the good. Female and male, the arts of war are thine, fanatic, much formed, dragonous, divine. Or the Felagrian giants roused to ire, like horses drive, uh, driving with destruction dire. Sprung from the head of Jove, of splendid mien, perjurer of evils, all victorious queen. Hear me, O goddess, when to thee I pray, with supplicating voice both night and day. In my latest hour, peace and health, propitious times and necessary wealth, and it in ever present be thy votary's aid, O much implored art's parent, who I made. Anyway, so then at this point you can um, then start with the closing prayer. Um, uh, yes, and then you can you can do the Adoracio position again, and then at the word Mihi, you always touch your heart, or touch your breast, or touch your chest, <laughs> um, and me he translates into English as I, uh, or me. So, Quod bonum fostum Felix fortunatum sit mihi geus orgo publicola, ac nationi sende universae, ita est. May I, geus orgo publicola, and the entire nation of Sandus have what is good, auspicious, fruitful, fortunate, and wholesome. It is so. And then at this point, then you turn to the north. Oh, which is going to be like backwards for me. I'll just do it turning to the east, but you can imagine that I'm turning to the north. Then turn to the north, and while touching the altar, recite Eliset, or Elichet. Um, or literally, it is finished. And then the Adoracio uh, position is resumed once more, and uh, twisting 
back and forth in a general uh, offering manner, uh, the write is finished. And so that's really just the basis of the um, Lorarium prayer, the Lorarium rite. Of course, you don't actually have to do it in the way that I do it. You can make up your own. Uh, in fact, they even add on this uh, on the Nova Roma website. Uh, they even say that the Pater or Mater Familia. Oh, it's Mater Familia. Oh, uh, the Pater Familias or the Mater Familia of the Gens has the ultimate responsibility for setting precedence regarding the worship conducted at the household shrine to the Lars or at the Lararium. Um And so, really, either your Pater Familias or your Mater Familia or you. You can make up your own precedence as to how you worship. In fact, you could even just go up to the, go up to your shrine and just, and that could be it. <laughs> um, though, I'm sure most people would want to do something a little bit more. Anyway, this is all up, of course, to the individual, as always. Um, this is how I have always tried to live according to the individual, not according to uh, precedent or according to how other people would tell me to. Um, so really, you can use this with, with whatever. Anyway, because this article is focusing on the Adoratio, the Adoratio can be used in any sort of manner. In fact, if you look right behind me, well, there's that one, and then there's this one. Uh, this poster is uh, dedicated to the Battle of the Kursk. In fact, it's an original Soviet propaganda poster. Let's just hope no one steals it. Um, you can even do an adoratio to that. In fact, I might even do that on May 9th. Um, and then this poster is actually an English poster. I'm sure it's not original. But it says, Preparing for October. And, of course, the large man there is Lenin. So, even on November 7th or November 8th, the National Day of Socialism and the Day of the Ways and Means of Revolution, you can even do an adoratio to that. Um, there's really just... The, the adoratio is just simply a salute. Um, it's a way to salute something, or the way to salute anything. Uh, it's just by kissing your hand and saluting, that's how you can sort of give well wishes or, um, gosh, it, it's just a reverent way to salute something. And when you salute something, you're really just greeting it. So you can use this in religious ways, or you can use this just in secular ways. Um, of course, its history is to use it in a religious way. But we live in a very secular and atheist society, or an atheist and secular time. So if you don't want to be religious, or if you're not religious, uh, you can even use the Adoratio um, even in secular manners. Um, if you love science, I know this will get a lot of people in Asia. If you love science, and if you are in a lab, I don't know, you can greet your chemicals. <laughs> uh, I don't know why you would do that, but <laughs> if you feel especially reverent to the field of science, or the field of engineering, or I don't know, <laughs> it's just a cultural expression. It's a ceremony, um, and like all cultures, cultures need some sort of ceremony, they need some sort of process, some way of greeting, um, and this is how uh, we can do this in Sandus, and I will be trying from now on to actually incorporate um, the Adoratio into, um, into this manner. Um, I did not include this in the article, but I'm going to say this here. Um, in the late Roman Empire, 
They used it even to salute emperors. In fact, uh, they would do it in the end by prostrating. Um, and of course, if you're a Buddhist like I am, and my Buddhist altar is over here, um, you can even do the adoratio and then prostrate. And I'm going to have to start doing this as a sort of cultural expression. And also because I want to start meeting more Buddhist uh, teachers. Um, and you really do have to prostrate to them. It's kind of, kind of respected and respectful. Anyway, um, so this is all, of course, preparing for... Um, the winter. And winter is when we really focus on creating our culture, creating our state, setting forth laws and precedents and policies. Uh, so hopefully this will follow in the basis of the next article that I'm about to write that has to do with the philia policy. And the philia policy has actually been sort of in the making, sort of being discussed on what to include in it um, since early August. Um, and it's, it, philia, of course, means love, or along those lines. And this policy is really focusing on the phrase, love for the country, or love for the state. Uh, and it's meant to create um, this basis of culture. Um, and love for people in ambulances. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, this all has to do with the philia policy, but it also has to do with just cultural expansion. Um, because in a year or so, I will be off to college, and it will be hard to spend in a, all this time on micronationalism and all of that. I'll have to actually start focusing a lot of my time on school and job. Um, <laughs> uh, and so it's really just meant to create a culture so that uh, even if we do get bogged down in the future, we'll still have this cultural expression that we can still resort to. And of course, um, for those of you who might have read it, there was an article in which I gave uh, earlier in spring that had to do with um, uh, the importance of culture in micronationalism. And that really, micronations can't just be a political entity. They need to be something more. They need to have a culture. Otherwise, they get bogged down, become inactive. And, I mean, come on. Relig their cultural activities are somewhat fun. Everyone loves them. Um, and so micronations can't be just political entities. It's just common sense. Uh, and that's the common sense of realism. Anyway, at this time, I've really exhausted everything that I can talk about the Adoracio and the Philia policy. Um, and that's about it, actually. Yes, Philia policy, struggle coming forth in the, in the next year in the Adoracio. So, I'm sure this will be the beginning of what will come to be the state building policies uh, for the winter. Um, and as is customary since uh, the first year of the creation of the state, um, which was celebrated in the first anniversary in April, um, I am sure that uh, this coming winter will be very beneficial. Um, and I will actually talk about that in the next video. So. Thank you, and, uh, well, I'd say stay tuned, but that's sort of overused. But I hope you uh, enjoy the coming autumn. <laughs> Bye, everybody.